there's something surprising about this redwood forest. And it's not just that it's in the city of Oakland. You're in this mystical forest and you look across a glade and you see this sometimes almost perfect circle yeah. of trees. So why are all these trees growing in a circle like this? Well, if you take a look right around our feet here, mm -hmm. you'll see the remnants of the original stump yeah. of a very yeah. large redwood tree that was cut back in 1855. And a ring of new trees surviving around this one trunk. So let's just measure the width of this one and we'll see what we get. Each ring of trees reveals the footprint of a huge redwood that was cut down to build San Francisco. And this is about 24 feet in diameter. It's a good sized tree. Gold was discovered in the Sierra Nevada in 1849. Mm -hmm. Within about three or four years, several thousand people had moved to San Francisco mm -hmm. and there was a huge need for homes. And the most available forest was this forest. So by 1860, every single one of these huge trees had been cut down. And it's very interesting, the huge fire in San Francisco as a result of the big 1906 earthquake, mm -hmm. it stopped in many cases because the homes were built out of redwood, the least flammable of any conifer. But those loggers seem to have missed one tree. It's been termed the grandfather tree <laughs> for obvious reasons. The estimate is that it's somewhere over 500 years old. It was never able to get big. It's kind of gnarled and twisted, mm -hmm. and therefore it was ignored by the loggers. And the loggers also left behind those redwood stumps, which have an amazing superpower. The tree continues to re-sprout after damage. It can be cut down, it can be burned down, and yet it'll continually re-sprout. Each one of these little trees, or not so little as the case may be, were once just a single little sprout. So today we have a forest of 150 year old redwoods right here in Oakland. And its location is remarkable for another reason. It's relatively dry here. It has probably no more than about 25 inches of rainfall on average per year. And most redwood forests are upwards of 50 or 60 inches or double. It seems to be persisting here, has a lot to do with the geography. The Oakland and Berkeley Hills are directly across from that big gap where the Golden Gate Bridge right. spans the coast ranges. And through that big gap, which is two or so miles wide, pours this sea of fog. And the first thing that fog does is it goes right across the cold San Francisco Bay directly to the Berkeley and Oakland Hills on the other side, which is where we are. So the trees need a lot of moisture and they're not getting it all from rain here, they're Absolutely. getting it from fog. Yeah, the amazing thing about redwoods is they can uptake moisture through their leaves and needles are beautifully constructed. You know, you can see the water just sort of collects on the tip and it drops off. Because the redwoods share the moisture with the forest floor, the trees support an entire community of plants down here. This is called the black huckleberry. You find it under redwoods, you find it under some of the coastal pines that also have fog drip off of them. This little plant here is actually called the redwood violet. This is the giant sword fern. These are very moisture demanding plants. So they're an indicator of health in that sense. We see smaller ferns or less ferns. We know that there's been a reduction in moisture over a period of years. Is there any indication that there's changes like that happening uh, in this area? There does seem to be a trend to smaller less productive individual fern plants. So it's kind of indicating a drying trend? Well, at least over this last 10 years. Right. These droughts are expected to become more common across the Redwoods Range, which has scientists concerned about the future of these forests. I would suggest that the drier it gets, the more and more restricted Redwoods will be to these very moist conditions. In some cases where the fog continues to blow through the trees as it does here, and so individual groves may shrink and maybe die out, but the great thing about redwoods is they've been around for literally millions and millions of years. So they've been through a lot and they will continue to go through a lot. And we shouldn't assume that 
because yes, humans have affected the climate globally, that it's something that the redwoods can't necessarily deal with. Urban nature is made possible in part by the following.